My name is Zoe, and I consider myself a very motivated person. I have something inside of me telling me that I can for sure do anything, but until this year, I was totally unaware of something, something important, critical even, that is required in addition to dedication and tenacity to achieve the kind of goals that I'd always dreamed of. I thought motivation was enough, but when I took on the biggest project of my life, I realized that I was wrong. When I started, I didn't know this project was going to challenge me more than anything before, or that it would be intrinsic to knowing what I know now, becoming the person I am today, and realizing that you can't succeed without a passion for the process. Yesterday, we were here doing dress rehearsals for these talks, and I heard everyone else's, and I have to say, I felt kind of incompetent <laughs> hearing all these stories about all the life experience they had and all the successes, and I remembered that I'm 15, and I couldn't possibly have the same life experience that they have, so I think it's okay that I'm here to talk to you about an experience that I have had and that will influence the experiences that I will have for the rest of my life. Some would even say that I am too motivated. I do have a habit of overcommitting. My mother likes to refer to it as my pursuit of shiny objects. Apparently, I have a tendency to look straight past the process and focus on the end result, which, yes, is true. When I was probably around eight years old, I declared that I was going to become the next Olympic equestrian champion. This was after about a year or so of riding lessons. I mean, of course, at the time, this seemed feasible because I was the best rider I knew, in my mind at least. As a kid, I would constantly find myself digging for gold, whether it be in the form of medals or also becoming the next Olympic swimmer. Like in grade seven, when I promised I would win the public speaking competition, and I ended up coming in about 37th out of 40. But, I mean, hopefully my speaking skills have improved since then because here I am. Here I am to talk to you about an experience that taught me the true meaning of hard work, allowed me to grow and look past the shiny object at the end of the road, and realize that happiness is actually the key to success. Another thing people say about me is that I am good at science, that I am a science person. I believe them, but I was never really quite sure if it was true. I mean, I like science, but I didn't love it. And, well, regardless, I, however, I'm the kind of person that is overly susceptible to the views and opinions of those around me, so I became Zoe, the girl who does science. Because, although I was never quite sure if this interest was motivated externally or internally, but regardless of that, I was motivated, so I continued with the pursuit in that field. In October of last year, I started on an eight-month science fair project. What I didn't realize was that I was again looking straight past the process and focusing on the end. I was focused on the goal of winning. It all started with the picking of my topic. At first, I was, I was all over the place. I went from wanting to create a detection device for lung cancer to wanting to find a way to help people suffering from celiac disease, and I ended up creating a water-saving showerhead. I came across this idea on Kickstarter, actually, seeing some similar inventions on the rise, and, of course, me being me, assumed I could beat these designs and engineer a showerhead that could help aid the worldwide issue of water scarcity. When I I became immediately enthralled with this idea because I thought it would help me win. I didn't even consider the work I would have to do to get there. It started with research. Lots and lots of research. In my mind, unfathomable amounts of research for someone my age. I probably read about 40 background papers on design and related topics, and there was a point in this research where I found myself looking at a paper on microbial fuel cells, which, as you probably know, is not related to showers, but it seemed interesting. I had, in a way, gotten lost in what I was doing and lost track of where I was headed, which is funny because about a month before this, all I could think about was winning. I had never imagined that I would become bored with my topic and lose track of what I was shooting for. Luckily, at this point, I was able to regain focus and motivation and continue on by focusing on that shiny object at the end of the road again, calling to me. I continued with research, more reading, more research, more reading, more research, more reading, more research. It became kind of a routine. I wasn't sure if I liked this routine, but I was in it. Although, I began to realize that I wasn't going to complete this project just by doing research, and I had to actually find a way to start designing my showerhead. I had decided, based on my research, that my design should use the atomization of water to disperse particles and increase surface area, therefore decreasing flow rate. But don't worry, when I started, I had no idea what those words meant in that order either. I wanted to be able to complete multiple tries at my design before actually building one, and I chose to do this in the best, but also the very worst way possible. More research showed me that computational fluid dynamics were clearly the way to go, or so I thought. 
I did choose to use computational fluid dynamic simulations to simulate what my different flow patterns might look like with each design. I felt like using this successfully would make my project a lot more impressive and make me seem more science-y. This seemed like a really good idea. It was not. I mean, I was, it worked out. I was able to run simulations and use the results, but the process required more tenacity than I was capable of. The program I chose to use was ANSYS CFX. They offer a student version and are, is highly respected in the engineering community, so it seemed like a good fit. When I first started working with ANSYS, my motivation began to dwindle, or I guess plummet would be a more accurate word. <laughs> in a general sense, ANSYS allows you to input conditions such as the environment, the fluids you're working with, and run simulations of your fluids flowing for different periods of time, which sounds pretty simple. I thought so too. <laughs> For the first few weeks using the software, I spent hours, and I mean hours, just trying to learn how to use the drawing tool. To run a simulation, you have to draw the environment or the object you want it to be in, such as a shower stall, and I mean, you wouldn't think that drawing a rectangle would require 10 YouTube tutorials, but it did. <laughs> I think my motivation was, well, plummeting because I just wasn't interested in what I was doing. However, I, I had to regain motivation at this point because I didn't really have a choice. After learning how to use the drawing tool, I, I mean mostly, I tried to complete my first simulation. It did not include a shower stall or a novel design shower head. No, it, it was a pipe. Just a pipe. <laughs> After about two full days of work, I was able to get water flowing through this pipe, which is quite exciting, I know, but I felt next to nothing. If my motivation were a flame, it had just been snuffed. But <laughs> seeing that simulation completed and looking ahead and picturing me completing so many more just like it did not excite me. In fact, it did quite the opposite of that. But at this point, I regained focus and motivation because I felt like I had to. I was using ANSYS because I thought, I thought it would be for the best, not because I wanted to. I tried my best to rekindle my flame because I felt like I must. This feeling was becoming familiar. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, my schedule started to become increasingly busy and I ended up having to take kind of a break from my project. I mean, in reality, I did have some time I could have worked on it, but I was just so mentally and physically done with it that I spent my time on other things. I'd become so increasingly bored and frustrated with my topic and I just didn't love it enough. During this break, though, I actually went to New York with my theater class, and I was truly happy, something which I hadn't felt in some time. Looking back, though, taking this break was probably not the best idea. I mean, yes, I was relieved during it, but, but not after. <laughs> after, it was chaos. After my little vacation, I essentially had about three, three weeks to complete the rest of my project. And to give you an idea of where I was at, I had basically only completed about half of my first design on paper. So it was going, it was going well. I mean, I knew it was my fault, of course it was. I had taken on something without considering the scale at all, but my biggest mistake was throwing myself into something that I didn't love with all my heart. Those, those next three weeks were some of the toughest times I've ever been through, and I don't think I would have been able to do it if it hadn't been for the support of my family. I didn't go to school for two weeks. The project had become my life, and it was consuming everyone around me too. I think the late nights were the hardest though. There was one night where I was up until 3 a.m. trying to get answers to cooperate, and I just broke. There were tears all over my keyboard, and I ended up having to take what I called a floor break, which was a pretty complicated coping mechanism I had come up with. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, lying there, rather, on the floor, face down, at 3 a.m., you know, as one does, thinking, why am I doing this? And I had no idea. As I mentioned earlier, I needed to complete multiple tries at my design before actually building one, and in those three weeks, I, completed, I went through four iterations of design. And during those three weeks, I don't think I would have ended up on the floor as often if I had loved what I was doing. The first design I tried to do was my control, which was just to compare my other designs to. I didn't actually ha even have to design this one, which makes it sound simple, right? No. It was the first one I had tried to do since the pipe, and this was miles beyond that. I did eventually complete it after about a week, which, if you do the math, left me about two weeks to complete the rest of my prototypes, design, poster board, and report. As you can tell, I am the queen of procrastination, but I don't think I would have worn that crown if I had loved what I was doing. My first two designs after the control were failures. 
as you, in the first one, as you can see, the water literally shot straight up in the air. So I moved away from that one, but the second one was not a success either, which was okay. I did eventually find a design that I thought would work, and I was excited for a bit. I think I was more excited about the prospect of being closer to the end rather than actually having a working design. But I was so incredibly done with ANSYS that I, I couldn't even look at my computer without getting angry or wanting to punch it. And there was a time that I did, but it, it's okay. <laughs> so I decided to leave the simulations and move on to prototyping. I needed to have something in time for regionals, or I felt like I had to have something in time for regionals. So I had a, it was about four days before regionals, and I had a 3D printed prototype of my design made. I have to admit, it was kind of cool to see what I, had what I had created come to life, even though it did not work at all yet. But I didn't, there was no I didn't have enough time to do anything more now, not that I could have mentally anyway, so I headed with what I had to the regional science fair. And apparently, it wasn't too bad, because I ended up winning a gold medal and a spot on the team that attends the Canada-wide science fair that happened this May. Regionals, which is, that was what I had my eye on since the beginning, my shiny object. Regionals was an interesting experience for me. I had to force myself to become excited and motivated about a project that I felt the opposite about. And I mean, I'm not saying faking your way through life is always the best solution. In fact, in most cases, it is not. But in this case, it helped me get to where I wanted. Canada-wide science fair was a whole new experience for me. It, it was my first time going, and it was the only thing that I kept a flicker of motivation alive. I went along with 16 other young scientists who I barely knew, it, knew at the beginning, but were my family by the end. <laughs> Before getting on that plane and heading to nationals, I had actually done a bit more work on my project, and I was kind of excited about this. I was done with ANSYS, as I said before. I, had, I hadn't turned, my, turned on my computer in about five weeks, so I had a larger non-3D printed prototype made of my design, and this was actually pretty cool. Seeing what I had grudgingly worked for actually turn out made me a bit more excited, like, for real this time. <laughs> and I headed into judging at Canada-wide, feeling a bit more confident. Judging was intense, but kind of in a fun way. It was almost like performing, which is something that I know I love to do, and it helped me realize that there are things I love to do that aren't science, but maybe a combination of the two would get me more excited. Canada-wide science fair was an amazing experience that I wouldn't trade for anything, but the process, was so painful that to get, the process to get there was so painful that I don't know if I could do it again. I was able to accomplish my original goal without loving what I was doing. Imagine what I could do if I had. And the same applies to all of you. Imagine all the things you could accomplish if you pursue, pursue not just goals that feed your soul, but a path that does the same. People have always told me, love, do what you love, love what you do, but I didn't know the true meaning of this until this year, when I hated what I was doing. Motivation is the root of all success. You aren't going to get anywhere in life if you, aren't, if you aren't motivated, driven to succeed. But I truly believe that motivation isn't enough. To succeed, you need to love what you are doing. You need to love the process. You could have the highest paying job, but, which is highly motivating, but hate the work, the day to day. Many people do consider money as a measure of success, but many of them aren't happy. Money, the goal as motivation, isn't enough. And motivation needs to come from within. You can, explore and you, will, you can explore and you will always find your way back to doing what you love, but you need to be motivated from yourself. Do not let other people around you influence you to the point where you are unhappy, where you're pursuing things for others. External motivation, yes, can be useful in situations to build connections, but when it really comes down to it, you need to drive yourself. For me, this project was part of my exploration. Would I do it again? No. But do I regret it? Also, no. Just because I wouldn't repeat the experience doesn't mean I didn't learn immensely from it. It taught me the most valuable lesson I will ever learn and that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Whatever I end up doing, whether I become an actress or a, a lawyer or even a scientist, if I'm going to succeed, I need to make sure that I am not just motivated by the end goal, but I am so passionate about the process that I will love the journey and stay on track. Thank you.